Advertising on Amazon KDP can be a little bit daunting at first. So in this video, I'm going to show you absolutely everything that you need to know about Amazon ads to get yourself started. We're going to explain ads in a bit more detail, go over a couple of ad strategies and also introduce a lot of the advertising metrics to have you properly understand why ads are behaving as they are and how you can fully optimize them to make as much money as possible with Amazon KDP. So ladies and gentlemen, exciting news before we actually get into the video. A lot of you have been asking about my two Amazon KDP courses. I can now tell you that they are officially live. If you click the link in the description down below, it will take you to my website where I have two courses, one for beginners called KDP Bootcamp, which basically introduces everything you need to know about KDP to make your first thousand pounds through self-publishing. And also the second course called KDP Mastery, which is a little bit more advanced on how to scale your KDP from just a side hustle into an online business that's making you two, three, four thousand pounds plus every single month. So check those down below in the description below. Absolutely everything that you need to know about low and medium content publishing is covered in both those courses. But for now, let's crack on to the actual contents of the video and how you can start your Amazon KDP ads journey especially if you're a beginner. So welcome to the actual contents of this video. We're going to be talking about everything that you need to know about KDP ads. Welcome to my beautiful looking Canva presentation I put together. Uh, again, slightly different uh, kind of video that you're kind of used to on this channel. But hopefully it's going to give you all the information that you need to know. It's going to be a little bit longer than usual too. So hopefully make notes, do whatever you want to do. And we are going to go into quite a bit of depth for beginners about KDP ads. So what we're going to cover in this video, there's three main things we're going to cover in this KDP ads video for beginners. The first one, we're going to go over a couple of types of KDP ads that you can make. We're also going to be showing you how to set up your KDP ads yourself. So two different types of ads that you can use to set up uh, for your KDP journey. And thirdly, we're going to explain the advertising metrics because this is actually pretty important to actually properly understand how advertising metrics work and why they're kind of doing what they're doing because it allows you to be fully in control of your whole ad experience. So absolutely everything that you need to cover, in my opinion, as a beginner for Amazon KDP ads is going to be covered in this video in these three kind of sections. So for the first section, we're going to be going through types of KDP ads. Now there are two main types of KDP ads that you can cover. There are auto ads. So these are ads that you kind of set up once and then will automatically advertise your book against search terms and products based off your book's metadata. So Amazon will do all of the targeting for you. So kind of obvious by the name auto ads, they're very hands off, very automatic. And all you really need to do is just set them up once and Amazon will kind of do the rest for you. On the other hand, then you have manual ads, which are a little bit more in depth. And these are ads where you choose what search terms and products you want to have your book shown against and for how much you're willing to show them against them for. Essentially here you're doing all of the targeting yourself. So rather than being automatic and leaving it to Amazon, you're manually targeting the right books and search terms you want to have your book shown up against. So manual ads are a lot, uh, have a much higher level of detail than kind of auto ads. So because this is a video specifically for beginners, we're only going to be focusing here on auto ads. So if you're looking for manual ads um, strategy and all the level of depth that you need for that, I do cover that in my KDP Mastery course. It's extremely extensive, so not something I can cover in a single KDP video. So if you do want to check that out, then obviously do with the link in the description. But for now, we're going to be focusing uh, predominantly on auto ads today and how you can make those work for your KDP business. So in terms of auto ads, I'm going to assume people don't have much idea about ads at all. So if you already have a bit of a, an understanding about how ads work, then that's great. You kind of be a head start of people here, but I'm going to assume people don't just so everyone understands exactly what's going on. So for auto ads, there are two main inputs. And as I said in the previous slide, auto ads, you kind of set them at once and then they're kind of automatic and Amazon will do the work for you. But the things you need to understand when you set up the auto ad is there are two main inputs that will dictate basically how your ad behaves. Firstly, you have your default bid and you also have your bidding strategy. So these are two things that are gonna kind of uh, dictate how your ad behaves, like I say. And these are two things that you control, especially when you set up the initial ad. So we're going to go into uh, depth about both of these now. The first one we're obviously going to cover is the default bid. So the default bid basically just represents how much you're prepared to pay for for a click. So for those of you, again, at very, very beginner level, Amazon ads are what we call PPC, which stands for pay per click, which basically means you only pay for the, you only pay your ad once someone actually clicks onto your ad. You're not just paying just to have um, it shown. People actually have to click into your ad for you to pay. However, therefore, for someone to actually see your ad in the first place, you need to win that advertising space. So in order for someone to actually see your ad on Amazon, you have to kind of win some sort of race to get your ad there in front. And that's kind of where bids come in. So you win the space on Amazon ads 
by bidding against others. So when you look on Amazon, you're searching for something, you see this kind of promoted uh, button uh, next to a product. This is someone who's paid for that advertising space. It's usually kind of at the top of the search or somewhere in the product pages. But essentially what it is, it just means that you've won that space by bidding against other people. And that's where your default bid here comes in. So you have complete control over what your default bid is. So what you'll do when you launch your auto ad is you'll set a default bid and if your bid is higher than your competitors then essentially you will win the ad space. So let's just say I had a default bid of 20p and person B had a default bid of uh, 18p. Because my bid is higher I'm going to win the advertising space for that, that kind of auction. So Amazon ads kind of auction off against each other and this is how, kind of how you win with your default bids. Obviously you have to remember there are millions and millions of Amazon searches going on every single day. So you're not going to win every single bid and you're also not going to lose every single bid. But obviously and naturally speaking, the higher your default bid, the more advertising space that you're going to win because you're literally paying more. So it's quite simple in that sense. So again, if your bid is 20p and you win that auction and then someone clicks onto your ad, you will have spent 20p for that click because your, your bid is basically how much you're prepared to pay for someone to click into your ad. And that's basically an input that you control based on how much your budget is and how much you want to spend on ads. So a really important point here when we're talking about bids is break even point. You should really base your default bid off of your break even point. So you first of all need to figure out how many royalties you get from each book and then set your bid accordingly. So let's just say for example, if you made two pound royalties per book sale, you actually only have 10 clicks on a 20p bid until it becomes unprofitable. So let's just say in a hypothetical world, every single bid that you put is 20p, it stays at 20p. And therefore you're basically paying 20p for every single click that someone clicks into your ad. If someone clicks into your ad, if 10 individual people click into your ad, obviously 20 times 10 is two pounds. You would have spent two pounds on those 10 clicks. And essentially what that means then, if you get two pounds back for a sale of your book, if none of those 10 people buy your book, all of a sudden you've spent more on that ad than it's got back for you. And therefore it's no longer at that break even point and you're actually losing money on that ad. So that's everything you need to know about default bids. It's relatively straightforward. And again, you just need to make sure you're being very careful with your bid. Obviously, the more that you bid, the more that you win, but the lower your kind of margins are and the closer you get to your break even point. So it's all about finding the range of where you want to have your default bid. Next up is bidding strategy. And this is kind of related to the default bids and more kind of um, focuses on how your default bid actually behaves. So kind of gives you flexibility on how you bid for your ad space. So you can see here on the left hand side, there are a lot, there are three different options you can choose for your bidding strategy. You can use down only, you can use up and down, and you can also use fixed bids. So essentially what this means is if you click down only, if you have a default bid of 20p, what it will mean is your, your Amazon KDP kind of bids in your auction will start at 20p and will only ever bid lower than that if the competition is lower. If you go for up and down, Again, it will still work off this default 20p. What it will do, it will increase that bid by a maximum of 100% if it thinks it's more likely to convert to a sale. So i.e. you'll be paying more for kind of better quality customers based on what they're searching for, their search history, etc. But you will potentially be paying 40p for that bid because obviously you spent 100% more than your default 20 bid, uh, default 20p bid, sorry. Or you can use fixed bids, which basically just says, okay, I want a default bid of 20p. I don't want to ever spend more and I never want to spend any less than that. I just want to spend 20p as my fixed bid. So it kind of depends what bidding strategy you go for. If you're a beginner, I would just stick to down only as it does just keeps things very simple. I had, well, 95% of my ads are based off the down only bidding strategy. So you can definitely get a lot of success doing that. And you don't necessarily have to overcomplicate it, especially if you are a beginner. Because you're doing down only bidding strategy, this essentially just means you will never ever pay more than your default bids. It just gives you a little bit more control as well too. So if you had that previous example here, where you have you get two pounds back on royalties per sale, if you never ever wanted to spend more than 20p on that click, because you kind of know you, you wanna get at least 10 clicks before your ad kind of becomes unprofitable. If you go for down only, you know you'll never ever spend more than 20p on that click. So it's a really good place to start if you are a beginner. So that's kind of the two main inputs into what kind of drives your Amazon auto ad. But a third point that I would re do really want to get across here is the book listing. And the reason this is important is because auto ads will use your book listing when it's targeting against other products. If you go back to what I said at the very beginning of this video, 
you kind of have manual ads versus auto ads and auto ads are very obviously like i say automatic whereas manual ads you choose yourself what search terms and products you want to kind of target against but because we're using auto ads that's kind of an automatic process but there is still some way you can impact this automatic process and that's because the the amazon algorithm basically looks at all of your books data to find out who who it should be targeting against so like i say in order to know where to show your book amazon's algorithm will look at your books title and subtitle it will look at your books categories it will look at your books keyword boxes and also look at your books description look at the kind of words in there kind of work out who it is your book is kind of for and then target based on that so although it is automatic targeting there is still some inputs that you can control that kind of dictate where the automatic targeting goes so it's super important if you're advertising any book on amazon kdp to make sure your title subtitle categories keyword boxes and description are all super accurate and all relevant to the book because that's how Amazon will push your book um, obviously against relevant search products and search terms that people are actually wanting and the, uh, basically the, the algorithm thinks customers are looking for these books will also like your book so it's super important that you'll get your Amazon ad listing right when you're running auto ads. So that's kind of the theory behind auto ads and how they work. In this next section of the video, I'm gonna go through and actually create our KDP ads and show you two different strategies for creating ads. I have actually covered one of these on my channel already, but I'm gonna go over it again, just for the sake of this video to give you a little bit more of an understanding. We're gonna go for a basic Amazon auto ad to start with, and then we're also gonna go for lottery ads and explain why we're doing both of these as well. So I'll see you there on the Amazon advertising console. So this is the view you'll get when you start to advertise your book. This is the advertising campaign kind of setup page. As you can see here, I've got some of my books here. Just please ignore these. These are just absolutely terrible books I made when I first started. So well over three years ago, they were kind of Fortnite themed uh, books. Obviously, you can't use the word Fortnite. Um, so I just kind of made uh, some quotes that people say when they play Fortnite. Anyway, we're getting distracted here. So these are the books I'm going to use as kind of dummy data here. So let's just go for the ad group name. First of all, I kind of just leave my ad group names as they are. I don't know whether that's uh, just a personal preference or people just kind of ignore this anyway. I don't really find it makes too much difference if you're just advertising in this way. So you then need to go and choose the products that you can advertise against. So in this first um, Amazon ads a kind of auto ad tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to advertise just against a single book. And then this next one, I'm gonna show you how to do lottery campaigns. So in this video, sorry, this uh, example, we're gonna advertise against this one book here. So again, let's just say it's a it's a well, it is a Fortnite themed book and just see what kind of comes up uh, from this. So we're gonna go for select the book that we want. We're gonna go for automatic targeting because obviously this is an auto ad. And then we're gonna set our default bid. So again, this is essentially how much we're prepared, oops, sorry, how much we're prepared for basically to pay for someone to click into our ad. And because I'm gonna assume you're um, a beginner to Amazon ads, you haven't got a huge amount of budget to invest into this, I'm gonna try and keep this default bid pretty low. So we're gonna keep it at two pound. Um, I don't know why I keep clicking into that. And because we get two, let's just say we get uh, £5.99 um, for this book. Let's just say this was £6.99. And we got, that basically would mean we get £2.49 royalty back from my book. I generally have a rule of, I want at least 10 clicks before my ad becomes unprofitable. So for a £2.49 royalty, 20p kind of works at a pretty good stage because if you have 10 clicks on your book from 10 potential people who are looking for your sort of book and 10 of them, I'm sorry, and of those 10, no one buys it. There's clearly something wrong with your book, your book listing. Um, so that's when I would take the ad down. So that's why I think if you have 10 clicks on your ad and no one buys it, that's a good number to be able to say, okay, well, people are clicking into my ad. They're interested in my ad, but just not interested in my book. So if something's clearly going wrong there. Go back, maybe change your cover, change basically the quality of your book because something is going wrong there. So a default bid of 20p, in my opinion, is really good. You're not going to win a huge amount of bids, but you are going to win a few and you're not going to be paying a lot of money for it. So I always go for a default bid of 20p. I then just go for a dynamic bids down only because again, this basically means we're never going to be spending more than 20p for a click. So in reality, because it's £2.49 is our break even point. If we get around 15 clicks, because we're probably going to have a cost per click at the end of this of around 15 pence, it's going to be a decent number of clicks to actually establish what's going on with our book. And then we're just going to call our, our, our campaign name. All I'll do with this, I'll just call it auto, uh, auto, and then the name of the book. So we're just going to go for uh, Shields book. And then we're going to go for the bidding strategy, which is down only. It's really important to keep your Amazon ads kind of naming um, really easy. So when you go back through, you know exactly what kind of campaign it is, what book it's targeting and the bidding strategy. We're gonna set our daily budget. Again, this completely depends 
on how much budget you have available. I'll just generally go for an auto add three pounds daily budget because if you're bidding a default bid of 20p, you do very well to spend three pounds in a day. And also one thing I do wanna mention here is Amazon will suggest a default bid. I don't really understand where they come with up with their, these numbers for. I guess it's in Amazon's best interest for you to spend as much money on the platform as possible. I generally will ignore these bids because there's a huge difference here between an 18p bid and a 61p bid. So I don't really know how they can come in and say that's the suggested range because that's basically a whole different ad altogether if you're bidding 18p versus 61p. So just generally stick with a low default bid and you can always increase this over time. Just go into ad settings and then just change your default bid. It's super easy to do. And then all I would do then is just launch that campaign. And what that's going to do is launch this, look into this book's metadata. Again, this is probably a bad example because obviously I haven't used the word Fortnite anywhere in the title or the keywords because it's a copyrighted and trademarked phrase. So I'm not gonna actually, so I wouldn't actually advertise a book like this unless there's very obvious kind of data in the title and subtitle, what sort of book it is. But just using this as an example because it's the first one that came up. But what it would do, it would look into my book's title and subtitles so it would know it's a gaming notebook. So basically look for any people who are looking for gaming notebooks and show it in front of them. And then over time, it's gonna gradually show me kind of how many people are clicking into my ad, what they're doing, are they buying it, and basically what my metrics are for that. We're gonna cover everything you need to know about metrics later on in this video. And then once that campaign is launched, give it kind of a couple of weeks and just see what the data is saying, and then decide whether you wanna keep the ad running or you wanna kill it. Basically, it's, it's spending loads of money, but it's not making you any sales. But you kind of work out then after a couple of weeks where you would, Go with your ad so that's how you set up an initial auto ad and i'll now jump into lottery campaigns which are a slightly different way of doing auto ads as i just mentioned this ad is going to be what we call a lottery ad and essentially what a lottery ad is again i will leave a link to uh, to the video i covered or uh, lottery ads in a lot of detail in the description below but essentially what a lottery ad is just adding loads of your books to one specific ad campaign so we're going to set it up in a very similar fashion to the ad that we've just done but rather than just targeting one book we're going to target loads of books all in one ad so they're all going to run off kind of the same the same metrics the same default bid the same bidding strategy and then that's kind of keeps it all in one place for us it's much easier to advertise this keeps everything really simple and then easy to to monitor going forward so all you would do again go back into your campaign creation and then just add a load of your different books here so i'm going to add just these four because they're the four that come up but let's just say you had some kind of 20 20 books to advertise add all 20 in there and what it's going to do is going to basically just throw all of these kind of search terms and products to advertise against and some of the books are probably going to do really well. They're going to return um, a couple of orders with a really profitable ACOS. But some of them aren't going to advertise very well. And then all you do with this lottery ad is then just take them out of the advertising campaign and only target the ones that are doing really well. So it's a really good way of just showing what books advertise really well in terms of an auto ad. So you can kind of choose either to do the way I've just showed you or to do lottery ads or a combination of both. It is entirely up to you. But I just wanted to show both of them in this video because they are two kind of strategies for beginners. So just put as many books in here as you want to target, go for automatic targeting. And again, the idea with a lottery ad is we're gonna try and just cast this really wide net out and just see how our books perform. So we're gonna aim for really, really cheap impressions. So for those of you who don't know, I'll cover this in the rest of the video. But impressions just basically mean how many people see your books. So we just wanna get our books in front of as many as people as pos as many people as possible for as cheap as possible. So we're gonna go set our default bid to something like eight pence which is absolutely minuscule in terms of bid. So we're never gonna be bidding kind of more than eight pence if we just stuck to this default bid. However, we are actually gonna be changing this in just a sec, so I'll show you. So we'll set our default bid to something really, really low. So we're gonna go for an 8p bid. For some reason it's saying enter a bid of at least two pence, which we have done. I'm not really too sure uh, why this is panicking over that. And we're gonna go into the next section, which is gonna be um, our bidding strategy. So previously we used down only, which basically meant we never bidded more than our default bid. Because our default bid here is going to be so low, so we've gone for eight pence, we're actually going to go and adjust this by placement. So we're just going to add 100% into both of these. And what this basically means is it's going to increase our bid by up to 100%. So turn our 8p bid into a 16p bid. If it means our books are going to be shown at the top of search, so basically a really good place for our uh, books to be shown and also in the product pages. So again, we're kind of sticking to this default bid of eight pence unless we want to advertise in these two placements and therefore we're going to be happy to spend 16p which is still much cheaper than most bids out there so don't worry about spending loads of money on your lottery campaigns because it's actually very very cheap bids that we're going for here and that's kind of the whole idea of the lottery campaign is get as many people to see our books as possible for as cheap as possible 
So again, once you've done that, we then go into our campaign name, just call it Lottery. Uh, and then we'll go for, um, well, it's an auto ad, so we can go for all. Uh, let's just say it's a UK lottery ad, so we're going to go for all UK books. And then we're going to go for placement um, adjusted. Basically, this means here it's a lottery ad for all of our UK books, and our bidding strategy is using the adjusted placements here. So again, that, what that basically means is really, really cheap clicks, really cheap impressions for all of our books. And then just set our daily budget to whatever you want it to be. Generally, I will say spend a pound of your daily budget per book that you have in the lottery ad, you're probably not gonna spend that with all of the books in there, but it's always good to have a daily budget in there. So let's just say we are advertising 20 books. I'll put our daily budget as 20 pounds. Again, that's all you need to do. Press launch campaign and over a couple of weeks, just leave it, let it run, let it do its thing. And some of these books will sell really well in terms of the auto ad, and some of them will sell not so well. After a couple of weeks or even maybe a month, Go back in and see what books aren't performing well. Take those out of the lottery ad and just keep the ones that are performing well. And what you're going to be left with is this advertising campaign with just loads of books that you know are performing really well and getting sales for you at a profitable ACoS too. So that's two very, very easy beginner strategy kind of ad campaigns that you can set up if you're just starting your advertising journey with Amazon KDP. So now I'm going to jump back into the rest of the slides and give you a more of an understanding of how all of these advertising metrics work to ensure you're fully in control of all of your advertising campaigns. So as I just mentioned, uh, this next section is going to be all about understanding the KDP ad metrics. It's super important you actually understand why your ads are behaving as they are. There's no point just copying me showing you those two different strategies of actually making an ad if you don't know what's actually going on with the metrics. So this is really, really important to understand. And I would definitely recommend taking notes here because this is how you can be fully in control of all of your ads and actually optimize them going forward to be as profitable as, po as possible and make as much money as possible. So these are the KDP advertising metrics that I'm going to be talking about. I'm not going to go into all of them in loads of detail because some of them like clicks, spend, orders and sales are pretty self-explanatory. We're going to be going mainly over impressions, cost per click and then also ACoS. But just for those of you that don't know, clicks basically just means in your advertising campaign, how many times has someone clicked on your ad? Spend, how much money you've spent on your ad? Orders, how many orders have come off the back of this advertising campaign? And then sales is how much... Um, your advertising campaign has driven in terms of a sales number. It's worth remembering that this is a sales number and not a royalties number. So this isn't all the money that you get. This is just the money you get from Amazon. Sorry, this is the money that Amazon will get. So basically, let's just say you have a book at £6.99. This is how much all that £6.99 is contributing to this number. Your £2.49 royalties won't make up this. So just worth remembering this is a sales number and not a royalties number. But for the ones we are going to go into a bit more detail in, starting off with impressions. Impressions are basically just views. So how many times your ad has been seen. So this advertising campaign, my ad has been seen 2.3 million times in terms of this advertising campaign. So that's basically what an impression is. Cost per click is the average spend per click. And it's a really good way of measuring kind of how your default bid is performing. I'll go into much more detail in the relevant slide. And then finally, we have ACOS, which stands for Advertising Cost of Spend. And it's basically just a percentage of sales that have been spent on that ad. So in this example here, we have £13,600 worth of sales with a 22% ACoS. This basically means that 22% of 13000 is our spend here, which is 3000 That's basically how you calculate ACoS. And it's a really good way of measuring profitability, as you will see in a future slide. And therefore, understanding all of these metrics allows you to be fully in control of your Amazon KDP ads so you can optimize them. You know exactly why they're doing what they're doing and what, what things are good, what things are bad. So it's really important you actually get your head around these metrics here. And I'm going to go into all of them in more detail now, starting with impressions. So as I say, impressions are essentially just how many times your ad has been seen. You can call impressions, views, whatever you want, if it makes it easier to remember. So let's go for a hypothetical example. Let's just say you have set an, ad, set an ad up and it's been running for two weeks or a month and it's only spent something like one pound or 50p. It's really not spending much money at all. You might be wondering, why is my ad not spending any money? Well, this is where impressions are a really good way to tell you what's going on here. If your impressions are really low, basically there's no views, so people aren't seeing your ad. It's because you aren't winning enough bids. So if you're not winning the bids, people actually aren't going to be have aren't going to have the ad put in front of them. And therefore, if you aren't winning enough bids, you need to therefore increase your default bid. So if your ad's not spending because your impressions are low, basically what that's telling you is increase your default bid, you'll increase your impressions, and more people will click into your ad. However, on the flip side, it's not always just as straightforward as that. If your ad isn't spending, it doesn't just mean because you're not bidding enough. There can be a couple of reasons why. One of them could be 
if your impressions are really high, basically means you're winning bids, so people are seeing your ad, but they're still not clicking and therefore you're not spending. The reason why people aren't clicking is because they're just simply not interested in your book. So maybe go back into your book, change your description, make sure all of the description, the categories, and all the data that Amazon ads read from your book is relevant to your target audience. Because at the moment, this will kind of um, shout out to me that our book is being shown in front of people who just aren't interested in our book. So something is kind of wrong there with the data that Amazon is reading off. But that's how you can kind of use impressions to understand what's going on with your ad. The next metric, therefore, is cost per click. So that basically is just the average spend per click. So your cost per click will show how your default bid, as I've said previously, is behaving. So let's just say we here we had a default bid of 30p. We have a cost per click of 26 pence. That's because with our default bid of 30p, we've gone for the down only bidding strategy. It basically means that on average, how much are we paying per click? So that's kind of a good measure of how your default bid is behaving. So again, let's just say here, for an example, we have a down only bid of 20p. If our cost per click was 19 pence, this kind of shows that our, our cost per click with this default bid could be 20 pence or anywhere below that. Because it's 19p, which is pretty high to basically the maximum we're prepared to spend on this bid, it basically shows that paying for these clicks for this specific book to put in front of these specific customers on these specific products is generally going to be relatively expensive compared to what we thought it was going to be. So if you're doing a down only bidding strategy and your cost per click is very close to your default bid, it means it's really pushing the upper bounds of where you're prepared to spend, which basically could mean if, you're, if your ACOS is still profitable at this point, you can actually increase your default bid here because it shows that you're, it's going to be cost a little bit more to get a click into your ad, but that's not necessarily a bad thing if your ad is still profitable. So just make sure you're not kind of suffocating yourself with a really low bid. And that's where that's a way you can kind of work out if that's happening or not through your cost per click. So in short, if your cost per click on a down only bidding strategy is really close to your default bid, just increase that default bid, give your kind of add a little bit more breathing space to kind of work away and increase the amount of people that are gonna be seeing your ad. And you'll see that through the cost per click metric. And then finally, ACOS, which obviously stands for Advertising Cost of Sale, as I mentioned, is basically a really good number to work out how profitable your ad is. And ACOS is calculated very simply. It's just spend divided by your sales expressed as a percentage or basically times by 100. So you can see here our spend, which is 3,000 divided by 13.6K, is 22.28%. That's our ACOS. And like I say, it's the easiest way to establish um, your ad's profitability. But the way you can do that is calculating your break even ACOS. So what I'd recommend doing, you're probably looking at this ACOS number thing, it's probably a little bit confusing, but it's actually so, so straightforward once you understand how the whole break even ACOS works. So to calculate your break even ACOS, which basically means what number this needs to be or lower for your book to be profitable, take your book royalty and then just divide that by your book sale price. So for the vast majority of my books that are £6.99, I will get £2.49 royalty back for those books. So £2.49 divided by £6.99 gives me a break even ACOS of 35.6%. And what this basically means here is if this number that I get for my advertising campaigns is above 35.6%, it essentially means I'm spending more money on this ad, then this ad is actually bringing me back in terms of royalties. However, on the flip side, if it's lower than 35.6%, I know that I'm getting more back in royalties from this ad than it's actually spending. So ACOS is a really good way of establishing profitability of your ad. Go into ACOS, go into lots more detail into it, look into how it actually works for you, calculate all of your ACOSs for your specific books, because obviously different price books will have different break-even ACOS points but it's a really, really good way to establish profitability. So I know it's a pretty scary number when you see some like decimal places uh, as percentages. Don't worry, it's super easy. Once you just calculate your break even ACOS, everything kind of structures itself around there. So ultimately what you want is a break, a break even ACOS or lower depending on what your ad strategy is. So break even ACOS is a really good way to assess your ads profitability. So there you go, that's everything I think you need to know to get started with Amazon KDP ads. But before we end the video, I'm just gonna summarize everything for you here so it's all in one place and easy to understand. So first of all, auto ads are dictated by two main inputs, although they're automatic, you do have some control here. So the two main inputs are your default bid and also your bidding strategy, which basically dictates how that default bid interacts. Secondly, you win ad space by outbidding other people for this space. So in terms of spending money on Amazon ads, it's very much like an auction. You're constantly bidding against all of your competitors. If you win the bid and the auction, your ad will be shown in a given area and Amazon would choose that for you. 
Thirdly, obviously with that in mind, the higher the bid, the more the bids that you're going to win, but the lower your margins are. So obviously in an ideal world, you'd win all the bids you want, but that would basically mean you have a really high cost per click, which is going to dilute your margins a lot more. So you have to find the balance between a, a bid that wins enough clicks and also, sorry, wins enough auctions to get you clicks and also a bid that's not too high that dilutes your margins too much. So again, I would generally say any sort of bid that allows you 10 clicks until you get to the break even point is generally a rough idea of where I think it's good to start if you're a beginner. And fourthly, one that's thing that's really important here is auto ads use your book's data as a reference. So if you think your title, subtitle, description, keywords aren't that important, for ads, they are super, super important. Don't get me wrong, they're important for every single part of the book process, but for ads specifically, because this is what Amazon will read off to show your book to potential people against potential products and for potential search terms. So it's really, really important you have your book's data relevant to what your book is. And finally, understanding ad metrics is absolutely crucial to being in control of all of your advertising campaigns. There is no point just setting up ads if you're just kind of copying someone on YouTube, showing you how to set up the ad, and you actually don't have any idea about why the ad's doing what it's doing. So going back through the, the, the section I've just shown you and understanding why ad metrics are so important is really, really crucial to a successful advertising strategy. So that's everything you need to know about KDP ads for beginners to make thousands of pounds through your advertising online. If you did enjoy this video, then please do leave a like and also subscribe for more KDP content. And if you want to go into even more level of depth, both on advertising strategies and the whole of the, of the KDP book creation process, then do check out my two online courses in the description below. But thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.